Now in Part E, they want us to do the same thing we just did, quite frankly, um, but with a 95% confidence interval. Well, you know, I mean, in Data Desk D DDXL, you can't get much easier. You just click 95, and it automatically changes down here, and you're done because you already have it um, in the data set. Oops, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Right click here. See, there it is. Edit, copy window. There we go. Um, so I could put that down here for part E. And copy window. Um, I also want to show it by hand just because I think this is a good way. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to be very crafty. <laughs> I'm going to, um, oops, excuse me, copy and paste all this stuff. Um, and I'm just going to go in and change things. So our confidence level is 0 0.95 now. There it is. And that changes the alpha and the alpha over 2. This is no good anymore because it, it doesn't use the X bar that we used, had before. So I'm going to have to go in and change that. Um, X bar is not this blue guy down here. X bar is still way up here. I, I mean, I suppose I could have given it, you know, dollar signs or whatever. That would have worked better. Um, and then same with down here. It knows that the square, right, the sigma is still 19,000, see it's purple. It knows the new critical value, which is 1.9599, right? But it thinks that the mean is now D14, which because when we copy and paste, it drags everything down. So let me just retype that. There we go. And there you had it. So that's a way to kind of sneak around Excel, right? So using the copy and paste feature, just be careful when you do that. You want to click back up in the cell and make sure every box makes sense. All right, which it does now. It didn't before. All right, so notice, by the way, these numbers match up with these numbers right here. I'm not going to do stat crunch because obviously there's something wrong with that data set and I'd have to go back in and find it, but um, it should work just as well for a stat crunch if you had the correct data set in there. All right, so that's part E. Part F, what effect did increasing the confidence level have on the interval? Well, that's a thinking question. But, oopsie, come back. Well, just look at it. This is 99%, and this is 95%. Notice, right, these two are farther apart than these two. If you want to be more certain you catch the fish, you need a bigger net, my friend. So if you want to be 99% certain you catch mu, right? you don't know where mu is. You don't know what the average mileage for all Hummers is. Right? So, But if you want to be 99% certain you know where it is, then you go fishing with this bigger net, right? You make a larger interval and you'll be more certain that you have it, right? That mu somehow falls in that interval. Less certain, you can get away with a smaller interval, right? Because you're less certain that it's there. So we can make some argument to that effect for F. I'm not going to type it up. G, do the confidence intervals computed in Part D and E represent an estimate for the population mean number of miles on H2 Hummers in the United States? Ooh, that's a good question. That's more a question about um, how the sample was drawn in the first place, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see, a used car dealer wants to estimate the mean number of miles on four-year-old Hummer H2s. She finds a random sample of 34 such Hummer H2s in the Midwest. Mm. Well, you could argue this a couple ways. I mean, it's up to you. Do you feel that getting all the Hummers from the Midwest is okay? Is the Midwest pretty representative? Or is that not fair to the rest of the U.S.? Does the Midwest have significantly different roads or weather or whatever? So I'll leave F and G to your own devices. Those are both thinking questions, but hopefully I've given you some thoughts um, on how to answer them. All right, so we're done with that question. And next time I see you, I will move on to number 45 this time. There it is. <laughs> I promise. That'll be the next one we go to.